hello. Uh, my name is Ricardo Fernandez. Uh, I work at the Arizona Department of Health Services, and uh, I'm here uh, at the Ryan White uh, National Conference uh, with uh, some of my colleagues from uh, Pima County Health Department and Maricopa County Health Department. Uh, Emerson Kuhn from Pima County, uh, Jason uh, Peters from Maricopa County, uh, and Joyce Hines uh, from Maricopa County. And uh, we're here together uh, to present on uh, different ways that uh, Ryan White Early Intervention Services funds uh, are being used in Arizona uh, to support uh, communicable disease investigation services. Uh, and linkage to care for uh, folks that uh, are living with HIV in our state. Um, so we'll just quickly give a, a brief introduction uh, for ourselves. Um, I, uh, my role at the Arizona Department of Health Services is um, the HIV care and viral hepatitis program director. So I work in our uh, HIV services programs, uh, Ryan White, ADAP, and in our hepatitis C uh, programs at the Arizona Department of Health Services. Um, so I'll turn it over next to Emerson to introduce himself and a little bit of his background. Yes, hi everyone. Um, thank you, Ricardo. My name is Emerson Kuhn and I am the program manager for our HIV and STI surveillance program here at Pima County Health Department in Southern Arizona. Um, we're primarily based out of Tucson, and I've been here in this role for about two years now, um, a little over that, and um, prior to coming to Pima County Health Department, I had spent about 12 years um, of my career at various nonprofit organizations, uh, usually always having something to do with um, STI or HIV prevention or working with um, vulnerable populations that I experienced um, homelessness. And so that's just a little bit about me, and you'll hear from me more later. Uh, thank you, Emerson. And Jason? Hello, my name is Jason Peters. I'm the HIV program manager here, also the pharmacy supervisor at Maricopa County Department of Public Health in Phoenix. Um, I am a pharmacist by trade. I have spent the last eight years before arriving here two years ago uh, in long-term care pharmacy, um, skilled nursing facilities, hospices, assisted living facilities, rounding with physicians, uh, developing plans of care, and working with other pharmacists to train them. Uh, spent a lot of time in infectious diseases and came to Department of Public Health to continue to focus on that and was asked to uh, run the new and improved HIV program. Uh, so here I am. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. And Joyce? Hello, everyone. My name is Joyce Hines. I am the HIV CDI supervisor for Maricopa County Public Health. Um, I started my career here, career here at Public Health um, in 2011 as a CDI um, and eventually moved up through the process of becoming a senior CDI. And then eventually I was promoted to um, HIV CDI um, supervisor. Um, and prior to coming to public health, I was a previous employee of Maricopa County for over 20 years as a probation surveillance officer. So I'm excited about being here at public health and you'll hear from me later. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Joyce. So, um, I'm going to talk, uh, this is Ricardo again, uh, and I'm sorry you can't see me on the screen. I had some problems with my, with my camera on this presentation. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the more boring part of things uh, that's important, which is the rules and the funding behind Ryan White and being allowed to do these things uh, with uh, Ryan White Services money. Um, I think one of the things that I frequently run across um, when I talk to colleagues and at conferences um, and I think that's part of why our project officer had asked us to present on this is because um, there seems to be misunderstandings about uh, using Ryan White funding to support uh, communicable disease uh, investigation services uh, and uh, or disease investigation services type activities. And um, 
and they are allowable. You can use uh, Ryan White um, Part B, Ryan White Part A, other types of Ryan White funding uh, to provide uh, these types of services in your jurisdiction. Um, there are just a lot of different criteria uh, that you have to make sure that you meet and that you um, that you follow uh, to make sure you can you can do all these activities and create these really cool programs without getting into trouble uh, with HRSA and being sent to HRSA jail by your project officer. So, uh, so that's the part that um, I'm going to go a little bit more into right now. Um, so, um, one of the the big the biggest things that that HRSA requires is that um, for early intervention services, when these are going to be used uh, to support activities that overlap uh, with HIV uh, prevention and surveillance integrated funding, like uh, the CDC 1802 grant, um, is that, uh, that Part B funds only be used for uh, testing and CDI, DIS type activities um, where they, where where funding for those activities is already uh, inadequate or there aren't funds to support those activities at an appropriate level. Um, so like in, in general, and for us in Arizona, I will say that's relatively easy and straightforward because our state contributes um, almost nothing to <laughs> our uh, HIV services, unfortunately. Uh, so we don't have really much of a problem saying that we're supplanting any state funds because there aren't really sick funds right now that support those activities. Um, and there isn't a whole lot of local funding either that, um, that necessarily is directed towards HIV. So what that means in our state is that the federal uh, grants, primarily the Ryan White grant um, and uh, the, uh, the HIV prevention surveillance integrated funding, the 1802, are the primary funding mechanisms that support our HIV programs. Uh, in Arizona, um, so and uh, and establishing whether and uh, whether something is uh, supplementing versus supplanting uh, can be a little bit uh, challenging. Um, but in general, um, there are a couple things that you know when we were establishing these programs, we work with our with our HRSA project officer on, and um, and generally there are some things you can't do. Like for example, like if you're already providing funding, like if I were funding. Pima County already with um, with HIV prevention funds. Um, you can't suddenly say, well, I don't want to fund you with that anymore. I'm going to take all that money away and then I'm just going to replace it with Ryan White money. Um, in general, um, that isn't uh, that would be considered supplanting funds. Um, however, uh, in our situations, there's very limited uh, Ryan White funds, um, or sorry, there's very limited HIV prevention funding, limited uh, HIV surveillance funding. And it's further limited as CDC has has prioritized areas with higher incidence in our state, which has meant uh, in Arizona that Maricopa County is supposed to be more of the focus of prevention funding. Uh, so um, that has uh, meant that there's less funding available in other parts of the state and that in the past, the state of Arizona has actually had to take away funding um, to provide more funding in Maricopa County from other parts of the state. So because the CDC required that, in that sort of a situation, uh, you could uh, you could supplement with Ryan White funds because having your funds reduced or being forced to use them in a different way by your funder is a justification for uh, for using Ryan White funds. Um, the uh, and the big thing with this is the supplementing and supplanting conversation can get very complicated. Um, so uh, we are fortunate to have uh, a really wonderful project officer. Uh, and I know that's not always the case. Sometimes project officers can be great. Sometimes they can be not so great. <laughs> uh, we're lucky to have a good project officer um, that we could talk to about and that we could work things out and discuss things with, uh, particularly as we um, funded uh, Maricopa County in 2019. And we're very clear about how we were going to um, supplement with Ryan White funds versus uh, supplant existing HIV prevention dollars. Uh, and and talking it out with your project officer, making sure you hash everything out, making sure that it's uh, that it's adequate is um, is a, is hugely important, and will keep you out of trouble. Um, so uh, one of the the biggest differences between 
um, a lot of the, the prevention and the surveillance funding, which folks I imagine are, are generally familiar with, is that um, uh, that you can't use Ryan White funds for uh, uh, for opt out testing or general testing that doesn't focus on a specific uh, target population. Uh, so for opt out testing activities, uh, those are things that generally have to be funded uh, with uh, with our uh, prevention funding. So uh, with in the situations actually with both uh, with Pima County and with Maricopa County. Um, we're fortunate in that we're able to braid different funding sources. So uh, for uh, for general testing that happens, like for example, at, and Jason and Joyce will talk about this a little bit more later, but um, at the STD clinic at Maricopa County, for example, uh, when you show up, you can be tested for HIV, uh, regardless of whether you fit a defined target population or not. Um, and we're able to pay for that because we pay for that out of HIV prevention dollars. Uh, we're not able to pay for that out of uh, the Ryan White dollars uh, because it isn't focused on a specific population. Uh, what we are able to pay for out of the Ryan White dollars uh, is the linkage to care activities, uh, the referral activities, the health education component, all of those things because those all focus on, um, can focus on target populations. They focus on the newly diagnosed and they focus on uh, folks that meet the risk criteria. So we're able to use our Ryan White funding for those types of activities. Um, another uh, requirement of early intervention services is that um, all of the different components of early intervention services must be present in one way or another. So, um, so for example, like to my understanding, like we could not simply um, say I, I couldn't go to Emerson and say well all I want you to do with my Ryan White money is just only do HIV testing like you <laughs> don't worry about these other activities uh, like you're just going to go out and do testing in the community um, and with Ryan White money it has to be holistic you have to incorporate uh, the uh, the HIV uh, testing counseling referral services linkage to care and health education and fortunately um, for our CDIs and our DIS folks in the state um, all of these things are already incorporated into what they do, so that makes things relatively straightforward uh, for us to meet this criteria. Um, but that is something that, uh, that you have to make sure uh, that you do in totality uh, with the program. Um, and uh, the next lovely part of Ryan White services is uh, the documentation and the compliance and the paperwork. Um, I think uh, I still remember when I first uh, spoke to uh, the division director at Maricopa County Public Health, and uh, at first she was very skeptical. It didn't want our buddy, didn't want Ryan White money, didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, and uh, was like, uh, yeah, keep away. I, I don't want to deal with this. Uh, we'll figure something else out. And I think Ryan White Money, rightly or well, probably more rightly than wrongly, to be fair, has a reputation of being very onerous and having a lot of documentation requirements. Uh, we have our site visit requirements. We have very comprehensive um, uh, reporting and other metrics that have to be met. Uh, so, um, so a lot of that can make it very onerous for folks uh, to document and to uh, comply. Uh, it is. Um, I was able to convince the division director. I told her, it's like, well, EIS is the, the least difficult of all the Ryan White services. So if you're providing medical services or pharmacy, it would be much, much worse. So EIS is the easiest and it is kind of like sort of a, an easier entry into Ryan White services because compared to the other Ryan White service categories, there's a lot less compliance. So that can make it easier uh, for organizations that are, or divisions within an organization that are new to Ryan White funding to be open to it and to be willing to take it on, even if um, they have horror stories or other <laughs> experiences from having to uh, to work with uh, with Ryan White funding that um, that comes with a, with that difficult reputation. And um, and for for both work, when our work with Pima County and with um, with Maricopa County, we're fortunate that um, we're able to uh, to readily document, you know, the and, and meet the Ryan White service criteria. We're able to document uh, the testing, the referral, the linkage to care, 
um, and the health education. Um, we get um, we get all of this data from from our sub recipients, and they do a great job of documenting everything. Um, we also are fortunate that in our office, and I think this is the case in most jurisdictions, but um, that uh, we're integrated with our HIV uh, prevention office. So uh, we work as best as we can with HIV prevention to make sure that we combine our requirements and combine what we ask for of our subrecipients. So there isn't separate reports and separate documentation for, um, at least programmatically, for, uh, for HIV testing and uh, linkage to care and the data requirements that we have. Um, it is the same for uh, for both the HIV prevention and the Ryan White stuff, and we've been able to configure it that way to make it a little bit easier. Uh, we weren't able to configure our billing stuff, so I apologize to Jason and Joyce's counterparts in finance. They do get to submit two separate CERs for billing, but the finance stuff and the grant management stuff, unfortunately, that has to do with procurement. We can't fix that, but programmatically, uh, we were able to at least have, there is um, there is one uh, one report uh, and one set of reporting requirements. So um, for communicable disease investigation activities, um, I'll turn it over to Joyce for the next couple of slides so uh, she can describe how um, how CDI activities uh, wor uh, work, what they look like uh, here in general, um, and and kind of like see the connections with uh, the early intervention services. So Joyce, if you're ready. All righty, thank you, Ricardo. Um, so currently we have um, four CDIs that are here working full time on HIV cases. Um, we also have two data entry clerks that help with that process. So um, I'll just kind of bullet give you explanations on the bullet points that are listed. Um, so we do provide linkage to care services uh, for referring patients that are HIV positive to appropriate uh, medical care. And so some of those clients come to us by means of they've tested if they're outside um, providers um, and then they come here for follow-up or we may be or the CDI may be the first point of contact to call that patient to inform them of their uh, positive labs and then we bring them into our facility. Uh, well, we try to get them to come into the facility so that we could have a more personal approach um, by educating them about what their labs are and what are the next steps that are needed for them to process through care. Um, giving them education about what HIV is and how the continuum of HIV care works. Um, and so we navigate that process for them so that they basically don't have to navigate that on their own. Um, when we inform clients that they are HIV positive, um, the CDI is responsible for eliciting the contacts um, and when I say contacts that are individuals that may have been um, exposed during a specific period. Um, and we inquire what behaviors the patient may have had that we look for specific individuals that we need to potentially notify. And so during that period of individuals that they identify that need confidential notification, the CDI would then follow up with that information. Um, we also, in addition to working with individuals who are newly diagnosed, we have um, follow-up for patients who are previously diagnosed um, for HIV. Um, and some of those individuals are moving new to Arizona and they just show up at the public health department saying, hey, I'm out of care or I need assistance with care. Um, I believe that maybe in some states uh, the public health department is actually um, part of that process, but here we kind of refer out where they would be referred over to central eligibility or if the patient has insurance then the CDI would help uh, navigate that process of care with an actual provider and not going through CE if the client so desires not to want to go through that process. But we definitely encourage everyone to go through that process because they could potentially benefit from the services of going through CE. Um, so 
with the CDI uh, interview, if we can't find, I'm sorry, if we are not able to find an individual initially by making the phone call, the CDI is responsible for going out into the community or any other uh, resources that we might find that we could potentially locate the client. Um, sometimes the numbers or addresses that we have are not valid, so they have to do um, some background investigation work to ultimately um, do due diligence in finding those um, patients and partners as well. Um, and then, of course, if the patient is diagnosed in our clinic, we do what we consider to be a warm handoff. Prior to COVID, we were attending the first medical visit with the clients if they were diagnosed and so that the CDI would be the uh, support person or the EIS staff would be the uh, support person with them if the client agrees that we can go with them to make sure that they have a good handoff to the um, provider that they'll be seeing. Um, so that's pretty much a day of what they um, actually do as far as the investigation part. And Jason will speak more on the actual process and what that looks like. But that's a day of a CDI here at Public Health. Awesome. So thank you, Joyce. So this is Ricardo again. So I, I think um, like in general, uh, I think folks can see how the CDI activities or the DIS activities that Joyce described uh, really closely align with, um, uh, with the early intervention service categories, right? Like all of the linkage to care work, um, all of the referral work, the connection to services, connections to care, because uh, central eligibility in Maricopa County is the, the way that, uh, that folks access Ryan White funded services. So if you, uh, if you need any Ryan White service in Maricopa County, or if you need uh, AIDS drug assistance program, ADAP help in Maricopa County, that would be your way to be able to access those services. So um, the CDIs uh, in uh, Maricopa County play a key role in uh, helping to shepherd people and working to get people through that process so they can access those services. Um, you know, they do that education, they do uh, that work uh, with clients to make sure that the process is as smooth as possible. And I think the, the other part that, um, uh, that I think Joyce didn't mention is um, the, the CDIs both in, in Pima County and in, um, in Maricopa County are, are very persistent, I think is the best way I can put it. Like, uh, they, uh, they, will, they will do the best they can to uh, to follow up with you, make sure that, uh, that they're able to talk to you, uh, connect you to care. Um, they'll keep calling you. They might show up at your house, <laughs> knock on your door. They'll, they'll, keep, they'll keep trying to get you in uh, to make sure uh, that, that the folks are linked to care, and they, they really uh, pursue that um, really strongly. Um, so, um, so with that alignment, I think um, – there's, um, for us at, at ADHS, we take a couple of different approaches, uh, given the flexibility that we see and the possibilities for alignment that we see between the funding sources. So um, we, for some of our contracts, we take a braided or integrated funding approach where um, we combine, where one uh, health department, for example, will be funded for uh, out of um, HIV prevention, uh, Ryan White, they might also be STD uh, 0318 grant funded, and all of that funding will be braided together in a lovely uh, complicated um, tapestry that, um, that our finance people have to figure out on the back end, um, and, then, and then the services are provided in integrated fashion. Um, and then we also have another approach that we use in our smaller uh, health departments where uh, where there's much, uh, much fewer clientele and where, for example, and this is typically where there just isn't uh, HIV uh, prevention funding available at all in that jurisdiction. So in those cases, um, someone might just get a small amount of Ryan White funding uh, for uh, the testing linkage to care CDI activities. Um, oh, sorry. I'm went too far ahead. Uh, so, um, so there, and both approaches have, have different um, advantages and challenges. 
Um, definitely um, one of the benefits we see of braiding funding, the way like we have, um, particularly uh, in our contract with Maricopa County, where we actually integrate two funding sources into one contract. Uh, in Pima County, um, it's it's different. Uh, there's they have separate contracts, but the team is integrated programmatically. <laughs> Uh, so, and uh, Emerson can talk a little bit more about that, um, but it allows us more flexibility because we're able to, um, you know, areas that can be funded by one funding source, for example, the testing that happens at Maricopa County, the general testing, we fund that with HIV prevention, uh, and then uh, all of the other activities that can be funded with Ryan White are funded through Ryan White. And that allows for a much more robust, comprehensive, and, um, and thorough program. Um, and it improves, um, it improves the services we can provide. Um, there's also a lot more integration between the different types of services, uh, which improves the client experience of the services uh, and simplifies um, the program workflow for folks, um, you know, even down to, you know, clients uh, not getting separate calls from separate CDIs, working in separate programs, which can be frustrating. And, uh, and as I'm sure folks who have been CDIs or work as CDIs know, uh, it can, uh, sometimes people don't want to talk to you when you call them and it can be challenging. Uh, so, um, so being able to reduce that is, is helpful. Um, in terms of challenges, um, probably the biggest challenge um, from, that I see from an ADHS perspective is uh, the monitoring uh, and administrating the integrated programs can be more challenging. Um, it, I, I know I have created many headaches for uh, the grants folks at, um, at Maricopa County uh, as uh, because, you know, the HIV prevention grant and the Ryan White grant have different uh, fiscal years. Uh, there's, uh, there's different uh, rules and, and other requirements for how things work. So, um, so there's a lot of things that can be challenging programmatically that sometimes can be frustrating. Um, so, so those pieces of it can definitely be difficult uh, and can sometimes make you want to just divide programs and move on. Um, but I think, um, in general, the, the advantage of having a more integrated program and the flexibility that provides, I think, in general, uh, makes it makes some of those headaches worthwhile. Um, and then, uh, for just complete funding for us, um, you know, we like I said, we use this primarily for our smaller programs. Um, they allow us to focus on on one activity. Um, it's the monitoring and the administration is much easier, and uh, which is very advantageous for our smaller counties because, uh, you know, we have some smaller counties where, for example, the health department director is also the transportation director for the county because they're so small, it's, it's the same person. So there's less capacity, there's less ability to do the work, uh, so the easier we can make things, the better, and uh, giving small counties with less staff headaches is not as good, <laughs> it's just not good. So, um, so being able to focus on a more narrow uh, CDI focused EIS program is something that we do in some of our smaller counties. Um, so I am going to turn it over at this point to Emerson so he can do a deeper dive into uh, the, uh, the early intervention services and the, and the CDI uh, program for HIV and STD in Pima County. Uh, Emerson, if you want to just let me know when to advance the slides, I will happily do that. Yeah, thank you, Ricardo. Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So um, just a little bit of history about uh, Pima County. We are um, in southern Arizona. As I mentioned, Maricopa County is um, about two hours, one and a half, if you're speeding like me, away. <laughs> from uh, Tucson or Pima County, uh, up more in the central part of the state, um, primarily where the Phoenix metropolitan area is. Um, we are, our kind of makeup and geography kind of matters and has an impact. Um, we're uh, on the southern border of the state of Arizona with Mexico. Um, we have two different tribal nations that are in Pima County, the Pascual Yaqui and the Tohono O'odham nations. Um, and then we have a metropolitan area also kind of in the, in the heart of Pima County, uh, Tucson City, which is about, um, the population is about a million. And I believe in comparison to Maricopa or Phoenix, uh, which is last time I looked, probably around 6 million uh, for the population. So we're not exactly um, 
super small uh, place and we're not as big as Maricopa either. So um, we're kind of a, a unique in between. And the way that things have been kind of done here um, before, before I came in uh, was we had two of our four clinics that um, Pima County Health Department has were uh, family planning or STD uh, clinics that people could go and get testing and other services. Um, and that kind of operated um, very much in tandem with our HIV prevention programs. But when I walked into it, there, there had been a very distinct divide within our health department. The, the surveillance and the prevention programs had kind of um, been separated uh, between different divisions when they'd previously been together. So um, when I came in, I just saw that we, you know, there was a lot going on with my CDIs. I have a team of eight uh, down here in Pima County, and the funding was split all over the place. There was um, a portion of them that were only funded through our STD surveillance, um, a portion only funded through our HIV surveillance, and then, a, and then maybe some overlap with the HIV surveillance folks and Ryan White funding. And when I came in, my CDIs really thought that Ryan White only had to deal with out of care. And as I was reviewing our contracts and the scope of service, I thought I saw um, that there was actually a lot of overlap with what they were, the rest of the team was doing. So I just started asking questions about how can we be more efficient as a team? How can we partner more intentionally with our prevention team? Um, we are one health department, we're one county down here, and so it just made sense to me, um, especially coming from a nonprofit background where you'd want to try and usually the, um, the status quo nonprofits is to try and diversify funding streams as much as possible. So um, I just saw this, you know, bulk of people uh, in their time allocated to one grant being, you know, a, a recipe for potential disaster. So I thought, let's Let's try and address that, ask some questions, and luckily Ricardo um, and ADHS was very, you know, giving with me and uh, allowed me to start integrating that funding. So, um, as you can see on the slide, we have the advanced, um, or we achieved the combining of our STD, HIV prevention and surveillance grants, as well as our Ryan White grant funding. So, we can go on to the next slide, Ricardo. Um, so these are our basic components. Um, a lot of what Boyce was talking about earlier, um, it's very similar down here in Pima County. Um, the, the kind of unique things that I would say um, is that our linkage to care, uh, we do shoot for and try to maintain within five days. Um, I would say that most of the time, we're lucky enough that we can get that linkage to care, linkage to care in under five days. Um, and that kind of one of the big things I wanted to talk about I, throughout this presentation that I think is unique to Pima County, um, there is a, a, a very rich history of a lot of community-based organizations working very collaboratively in this county. Um, I previously, before coming here, um, am from Phoenix personally and uh, had a career up there, and I, there was some collaboration in Phoenix, but when you come down to Tucson, it's just a little bit different, and I feel like that was an opportunity. I still saw, even though in the nonprofits there was um, that kind of collaboration happening a lot, whenever Pima County Health Department was coming to the table with some of our community-based organizations doing HIV or Ryan White funded work, there was like a very significant attitude um, between the perception of who we were as public health um, and, and, and them as the nonprofits or organizations. So I thought that that would be important to really look into. And building that relationship has really helped our linkage to care um, be a little more tight. So um, I believe we could go on to the next slide, Ricardo. Um, as I was mentioning, our um, team is made up of eight CDIs, uh, community disease, disease investigators, and I've now gotten the, the funding to spread out across all eight of them at pretty evenly. Um, they're all at least a third funded by Ryan White Funds, um, and uh, then they have some other mixtures of funding 
but are uh, as a program manager, I oversee and manage the program. And I also work towards building and maintaining those community relationships with our community partners and stakeholders. Um, our CDIs do a lot of the same work that Joyce was mentioning earlier, uh, particularly our notification of positive results and our partnering elicitation and interviewing. Um, we similarly call, try to call in our positive um, before we deliver that result. We try to do it in person and in that meeting when we call them back for those results um, is kind of when we kick into gear with our EIS um, services and, and doing the uh, arranging of the, the first medical appointment. Um, I think we can move forward, Ricardo. Yeah, so um, at our clinics, we are fully, we're integrated, um, like I said, with family planning. And so a lot of people access our clinics for both STD as well as birth control and HIV testing and screening services. And so um, that calling back in sometimes, you know, isn't always the indicator that we might be delivering some, you know, quote unquote bad news that there still is a stigma with HIV out there for a lot of our patients. Um, but we, you know, they might be coming in because of follow-up treatment needed for the STD testing that we did or family planning services. And so that's kind of a, a good buffer in the way that we present that. When we make that call to set up that appointment and get them confirmed to come into our clinic, our CDIs um, also uh, call two of our clinics that we, uh, two of our long-term care um, partners for HIV services in the community, um, El Rio and Peterson Clinics, um, to basically ask them to hold an appointment for this person that same day if possible or the next day. And most of the time we're able to do that. And then after the patient comes in and we deliver those results, our CDIs do the education, the partner institution, um, you know, we talk about prep for partners and things like that. We um, confirm with the patient what is their choice. Do they want to seek care and have that first medical appointment with their own PCP if they have one? or would they like to go to one of these two options that we partner with? And um, when they make their selection, we then follow up after uh, that meeting and, um, or during the meeting to make sure that the, that appointment is confirmed. And then we, we do that kind of warm handoff with whichever um, partner they're going to. So um, that's kind of how the, the actual nuts and bolts that we go through in doing that linkage to care. Um, we do not, like I mentioned, at Pima County Health Department, we don't have the capacity or um, uh, uh, it's just not the way that Pima County Health Department has been doing um, our HIV care to actually administer or do the follow-up patient um, care for the dispensing, dispensing of ART therapy um, or HIV care. Uh, we rely on those connections to our community partners um, very heavily for that. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Ricardo. Um, so like I said, it, it becomes vitally important for that communication to be ongoing um, on top of, you know, making sure that we have those uh, appointment holders, placeholders, when we call somebody in for their results. Um, we're, we're pretty constant in constant communication with our community partners. Um, excuse me. We have uh, several meetings throughout the year um, that different um, partners host. Um, so I try to make sure that the health department hosts at least two um, meetings a year with both of those long-term partners, as well as some of our um, community-based organizations that do uh, wraparound HIV care services like Southern Airs of AIDS Foundation. Um, they have a, a good prep navigation program that they're funded for. And so we, we uh, bring those different groups and stakeholders together and kind of troubleshoot the different issues we're seeing. Um, if there's a lag at all in connection to um, our partners, um, basically just trying to address whatever issue we can to make the patient experience as 
efficient and smooth and easy as possible. Um, so that, that work with them becomes really, really important. Um, and like I said, there's a strong culture here in Pima County of that kind of collaboration and being able to jump in and be um, more of a partner to our community-based organizations has been kind of our biggest reward, I think, and, and helps our program become um, a little less looked at, like where the, the public health police coming in um, or that you know we're getting funding that we're taking away from them. Um, that's not the case. We are very much a partner um, with these clinics uh, that provide services and these other organizations like SAFE. Um, a few of the, the people that um, run those programs and organizations are involved in our Ryan White Statewide Advisory Group. And um, I, I and uh, one of my CDIs have joined that group. Um, it's a work group that kind of works on advocating on behalf of those folks living with HIV and utilizing Ryan White services throughout the state. Um, I think that that's helped contribute a lot to building that trust and maintaining those relationships uh, by being a, par a partner and a player at the table with them. Um, Southern Arizona AIDS Foundation also hosts, as I mentioned, um, at least once a quarter, a meeting with all the various agencies um, throughout Pima County that provide PrEP or PrEP navigation services, um, as well as PEP, post exposure or prophylaxis um, services. And at those quarterly meetings, um, you know, I'm very, very vocal about what we can and can't do at the County Health Department, but also how can we help and be better uh, in terms of our partnership to them? How can we help refer out more to the various agencies that are providing those services? Um, and, and I think that that's really been our, our biggest success. Um, but that's kind of, I think, where I'm going to leave it until the Q&A section. So I'll hand it off to my partners at Maricopa, Joyce and Jason. All right, Jason, let me know when you're ready. Ready, go ahead. All right, so a little history of our clinic here at Maricopa County is uh, we've been a STD clinic for approximately 60 years in one form or another. Um, our HIV clinic has been, um, when it was originally started, uh, it was a separate clinic. And then that clinic was combined with the STD program. Um, just about a year and a half ago, um, the decision was made to separate the HIV and STD programs for data purposes, for um, giving HIV clients the attention that they deserve, and um, to give the HIV program its own leadership um, and kind of, uh, again, I suppose, give it the attention it deserves. Um, the, while separate, it, it is also a combined workflow as far as testing goes. Our clients will come in for testing and they will um, be tested for both STDs uh, and HIV. They will uh, see one of our STD providers if they're having symptoms. Um, so while the programs themselves are considered separate, we do have some overlap. Uh, these programs were separated in January of 2019, and we've been operating it this way since then. Next slide, please. So our specific components, um, we have testing, of course. Uh, we deliver the test results. We offer partner services to our clients. Uh, solicitation of partner information, a lot of the things that uh, Joyce has commented on. Uh, partner notification, linkage to care. Uh, our target is, of course, within five days uh, of a positive test. Uh, this is, of course, defined as completion of their first medical appointment with a provider, their, their long-term provider. Um, um, data collection is a huge component of what we do, uh, reporting, surveillance, and um, any prevention service uh, and education that we can provide to our clients. Next slide, please. Um, so here we have our, um, our organization chart here. 
uh, I'm the program manager, Joyce, HIV CDA supervisor. We have four CDIs. We have two data entry folks and an early intervention specialist at this time. Next slide. So the staff duty is kind of to piggyback on uh, what Joyce has already said. Uh, we have our CDI supervisor who does pretty much all of the heavy lifting in this place. Um, she oversees directly the CDIs first and foremost. CDIs are uh, kind of our backbone. Uh, they, they're really kind of a jack of all trades uh, and they're phenomenal. Uh, we're so lucky to have the ones we have. Uh, notifying clients of their positive results. Uh, partner elicitation and interviews. Um, this is uh, such a, a big part of what they do. Uh, they're trained investigators, uh, and, but it, it really display an empathy and compassion towards their clients. It's, it's something else to watch in, in public. Um, Follow-up confirmatory testing and prep education. We'll talk just a bit more about that when we get into our workflow. Um, our data entry staff, our data entry staff are um, providing surveillance on all the labs submitted to us by ADHS. Uh, they're actually assigning cases to CDIs as well uh, as these come over for follow-up and they're ensuring our data is complete. Um, this, this whole thing operates on them um, and they do a tremendous job for us. Next slide. So our early intervention specialist, um, she happens to be a she right now. Uh, she addresses social services needs for our clients. Uh, she is a trained social worker. Um, she can help with housing, uh, do assessments for behavioral health. Uh, she has uh, years of experience here in our clinic uh, in the TV program as well. She's really uh, has a, a ton of resources for our clients when needed. Um, she obtains medical coverage information establishes medical appointments like the CDIs. Um, they they kind of trade back and forth. Uh, she can make immediate rep, Ryan White intake appointments. Um, she follows up with clients uh, and with providers to ensure the appointments have been made and uh, overall compliance uh, as a social worker. That is her bread and butter and she's just amazing at it. Um, she also ensures that patients who've fallen out of care are relinked. Um, they, uh, same stipulations here. We try to get them relinked within five days uh, and provide them everything they need. Uh, next slide, please. So our workflow. We have our client testing, as I said, for both STDs and HIV. Um, I'll try to give this a quick breakdown. I do much better if I'm animated. It'd be better if you could see my body. It would make more sense, I think. Uh, our uh, workflow, client comes in, uh, says uh, they would like testing. They come in, uh, they are triaged accordingly, they are admitted to the facility, and uh, they're asked at that time, do you have symptoms? What kind of testing are you looking for, X, Y, Z? Um, scenario one, client doesn't have symptoms. They want to come in for testing. Uh, we call this a rapid test. Uh, they come in, excuse me, express testing. Uh, they come in for express testing and they are seen by one of our medical assistants. Uh, they quickly get their labs drawn and they're out the door uh, if they choose not to wait for their labs and their results. Uh, we see this a lot, especially around lunchtime. We get uh, clients coming in for their lunch breaks uh, and pretty, but pretty much a revolving door all day. Uh, we see, I believe, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, we're uh, over 60% of our clients that come through, uh, go through <clears throat> express testing. Now, um, on admission, every client is given an information sheet uh, on, on PrEP. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, are you a candidate for PrEP? And are you interested in PrEP, essentially? Uh, try to keep it as easy as possible. These, when they go through express testing and they're not gonna wait for their results, uh, clients interested in PrEP or that meet these requirements will be called back by our CDIs. This is how we capture those people um, who, are, who are leaving with, without us being able to stop them and speak with them. Uh, scenario two is clients are coming in uh, wanting express testing because they have no symptoms. However, they would like to wait for their results. Uh, this is where we can engage those clients the most 
uh, those clients will come in um, while they're waiting for the results, our HIV CDIs uh, engage the client. So it, it kind of double duty. Um, we get to engage the client while they're waiting for results. It gives them something to do. Results take maybe an hour uh, and it gives the client something to do. Uh, speak with one of our CDIs. Our CDIs will interview, ask them if they know about PrEP, um, do, a, do a quick uh, a little questionnaire on them and find out if they're potentially a good fit for PrEP and if they would like to be linked to an outside provider. Uh, we've had excellent success with this. We've had some great community partners who were able to link it to. Uh, we have a standing appointment same day and we've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of benefit from this. Uh, scenario three is our uh, client comes in and is uh, symptomatic somehow. Um, they come in and they're put with a provider. So these providers are our STD providers. Uh, they are, this is where the workflow kind of separates, I suppose. Uh, this STD provider will uh, assess them, treat them for syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, uh, whatever, based on symptoms, uh, based on test results. And then um, before they leave, our providers in the STD clinic have, um, are assessing the patient to see if they are uh, a candidate for PrEP. Now these clients, while they're here, um, will be asked, um, will be given from the provider themselves uh, a rundown of what PrEP is and if uh, this is something they might be interested in. Uh, they may be interested, if they are, um, they can be put right with one of our HIV CDIs immediately. If they're not, if they are interested but they can't wait, we see this a lot, um, a special uh, encounter is sent through our um, eClinical Work software, sent to the HIV team for the HIV team to follow up. Once again, CDI does follow up with that. Um, assuming a client is positive, uh, let's just use the example of a client comes in, uh, wishes to wait for results, uh, they wait for results. They've already spoken with the CDI about PrEP uh, in case the result is negative. And uh, let's say the result comes back positive. At that time, the CDI um, gives them their, their result and asks them, would they like to take part in our Rapid Start program? An explanation of the program from top to bottom is given to them. Uh, it's going to take this long. This is what we cover. You're going to see a provider today. You may be dispensed medication. Uh, we're going to take you over to the pharmacy. Uh, the um, uh, We're going to link you to care. We can get you into a provider maybe as soon as today. Um, and is this something you would like to be a part of? Um, most of the time, the answer is yes. And uh, kind of our hallmark that uh, Joyce mentioned, but I almost feel like she didn't beat hard enough, is the, uh, the CDI says, uh, I'm going to be with you this whole time. I've given you your result. I am with you. I am here. Uh, I'm going to be with you with, uh, while you see the provider, uh, while we you know, go through the building, essentially. Uh, and we're going to bring as many people to you as possible. We're not going to parade you around the building. And um, by the time you leave here, um, you're going to have everything you need, and then I'm going to follow up when we're done. Uh, I, I firmly believe in this, and uh, I feel like it served us very well. Uh, at the moment, the, we have um, begun, uh, just this last year, we've begun dispensing seven-day med packs of uh, both Victarvi and Simtuza. Uh, to date, we've only been dispensing Victarvi. Uh, the physicians like that one the best. But a seven-day supply. Uh, and we have, uh, our linkage to care numbers have been fantastic. Our community partners are amazing. So we've been able to link patients to care super quickly. Next slide, please. So ongoing coordination is uh, vital uh, to what we do. Um, much like Emerson said, uh, I, we would not be able to operate without the, uh, or at least operate so efficiently without our community partners. We have regular meetings. Um, 
most of the time weekly. Uh, COVID has put a wrench in that a little bit as of late, but our uh, the foundation has already been there and we have so few problems now. Uh, the We have standing appointments. We have about eight different providers uh, in the Phoenix area that are willing to take part in Rapid Start. Standing Between standing appointments uh, to getting patients in same day, we will fit you in. Uh, that's It's just been nothing short of amazing. Um, we, we do have MOUs with some of our outside groups and on coordination with uh, some of our partner clinics. I think that's about it. There's always more. I can talk about this a lot, but I, I think we're, I think that's about it. Well, uh, thank you very much, Jason. Um, I, yeah, I don't have it. This is Ricardo again. I don't have anything else. Um, so thank you all for, for joining and, uh, and team for presenting.